Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is Bunny Must Die, Chelsea and the Seven Devils. This game is currently the exclusive title in the current Back to School bundle from Indie Royale. This bundle is available for about six more days. I believe it is ending on or around September 22nd. So head over and take a look at it at IndieRoyale.com. This game will be coming to Desura. I believe it will be a price of $10 at that time. And I imagine you can also get the DRM free version directly from the manufacturer's website, BunnyMustDie.com. Check it out for all of your Bunny Must Die needs. This game originally came out in 2006. It's a Japanese indie game from a developer whose name I will not butcher through attempting to pronunciate it. Pronunciate it? Pronunciate it? Pronounce it. Bunny Must Die was localized by Rockin' Android, who some of you might know as the group that localized the really cool side-scrolling bullet hell shooter Gundamonium. The Gundamonium collection uh, came to Steam through actually an Indie Royale a few months ago. So uh, these guys are definitely up-and-comers in the translation business, and uh, they have kind of tweaked this game a little bit with a remastered soundtrack and a slightly tweaked graphics. So pretty cool to see this game coming to America. Uh, I actually had heard about it, never seen it really, but heard about it uh, a couple of years ago and uh, kind of piqued my interest, but yeah, it seemed like a little too much trouble to try to play a game that was fully in Japanese with only a really horrible walkthrough as the translation, so yeah. Anyhow, Bunny Must Die, what the hell is it? Well, it is, uh, as you saw in the old school style demo there, that's right, if you sit on the title screen too long, you will get a demo. Uh, it is a side-scrolling platformer in the Metroidvania style. You'll definitely see that as we get into it. But uh, for now, let's just get into the gameplay. I will warn you that this is one anime-ass anime game. And you're going to see that as we go through the introduction. Now let's enter in our name here. And get things rolling. Here we go. Huh. All right. Just bear with me through this intro, and we will get to the gameplay, but I think it's necessary to set the mood that you actually experience the insanity of the intro to this game. Cat weapons, using thermonuclear power, have triggered the feline world war, enveloping the world in feline flames. The remaining populace were plunged into a cruel world war, where only the strong survived. No, on the contrary, they actually achieved harmonious use of thermonuclear energy and lived their days in peace. All's well that ends well. Three days later, the mighty thermonuclear power plant exploded. At the time, Bunny just happened to be nearby. She was not badly injured, but the exploding cat curse caused her to grow cat ears. Bunny was turned into a half-rabbit, half-cat, something or other. Oh, whoa. Oh, my. How terrible this all is, spoken in a crazy high-pitched woman's voice. Bunny then followed the portly divine messenger, who suddenly appeared to her. They soon arrived at the Devil's Labyrinth, where she could break the curse. However... As soon as they arrived, they were attacked by a raging bull. The portly divine messenger fought back with everything he had, but it proved futile. He was pierced 24 times by those incredibly sharp horns, dying on the spot. The portly divine messenger was absolutely beyond dead. The raging bull then up and left, but Bunny had no idea how to escape the place. Remainder abbreviated. Thank God. So there you go. And uh, here we are. We find ourselves in the Devil's Labyrinth as Bunny, who is an anime woman in a one-piece bathing suit and uh, thigh-high boots, who has bunny ears on the top of her head and has grown cat ears from the sides of her head and uh, she is now setting out to reverse that curse. So here we go. The first thing you'll notice when you try to play this game is you cannot move right. That's right, you cannot move right, not at all. You can only move left. 
If you had bothered to read the direction screen that came up and told you what all the keys were, it actually tells you you can't move right until you get a special item. So let's go to the left in search of that special item. Oh, here it is. That was pretty easy. Gears of the Past allows you to walk backwards. Backwards, all right. Well, I guess walking to the right is the equivalent of walking backwards. All right. Okay, so as tempted as I am to walk to the right, I'm going to go ahead and continue to the left because... Check it. Gates open, okay. Use the switch. Got it. Okay, it's on a timer. Got it, got it. Ooh, what's that? A heart. Oh, an empty vessel. Maximum life power increased. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Oh, that switch only has a count of one. Okay, and it probably controls this door over here, but... Oh, I can shoot. Okay, cool, cool. All right, but I'm just going to assume that that is something that I'll probably have to get to later. All right. Right. Okay, spikes. Right. Uh, now, that's something that actually uh, comes into play here. When, when I say Metroidvania, a lot of people don't necessarily understand what that means. You know, that means a few things. And one of them is just what we saw there. That switch back there only has a one-second timer. That means that I can't get through that door after hitting that switch. Uh, so a Metroidvania game is going to lay out things like that. They're going to lay out areas of the map that you cannot yet get to until you obtain certain special powers that are going to come to you throughout the game. Think about Metroid. You couldn't get to certain places until you could roll into a ball. You couldn't get to certain places until you had the bomb or the double jump, that sort of stuff. So that's the kind of thing that you're thinking about here. You're going to see a lot of things that you just can't get to. And it's going to be futile to attempt to stand there and just, you know, try over and over again. Did I say futile? Like, futile like the time period? I meant futile. Yeah. English. My first language. Right. So, uh, yeah, telling us we can break walls. That's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so yeah, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, also, if I remember correctly, there is, yes, a map. So, you know, it's hitting all the things that you're going to see in a Metroidvania game. Areas that will require you to progress further through your skill set in order to access, and a big old map that's made of squares and rectangles. So uh, yeah, we're ticking off all of the Metroidvania requirements right here in uh, the very beginning of the game. Okay, so we're breaking that wall. Nice and easy. Whoa, spikes. <sighs> so I will say that little uh, item bar at the bottom maybe blocking my view of those spikes just a little bit uh, but but that's okay that's okay uh, only one life it would seem but uh, immediate continues from the place that you last saved or the start of the okay, all right I can't walk backwards all right grab this and we're gonna go back and we're gonna get that heart because I'm sure having a lot of life is going to be a very good thing and I'm guessing that that little thing that was on the platform where I died is probably a save point because it was swirling with energy. So kind of kind of regretting not actually getting to there and dying right before that. But uh, hopefully we can set that right. Okay, so there it is. Jump over. Crouch in front of this monument to save your progress. Right, so the next time I die senselessly, we'll start from this little thing instead of the very beginning of the game. All right, so I'm shooting these things, but I'm not seeing any real reward to shooting these. Very Castlevania, having sh torches you can shoot. Uh, oh, an enemy. A pumpkin head man with a witch's hat on. Okay, and marshmallows uh, or volleyballs uh, hovering around him. Oh, probably spikes down there. Oh, oh, you can... Oh, good, good. Okay, you can actually look the camera down by crouching. Okay, that's very, very good. Very good. Definitely happy with that. Die, I say. There we go. All right, moving, moving, moving. Oh, another message. Let's check it out. Bunny can expend time power to stop the flow of time. Well, bit of time manipulation here. Yellow powder. All right, well, so now I have a time bar under my life bar. Nice. Nice. So, so far, this game's uh, feeling pretty good. You know, it's got a decent jump. Uh, you know, the jump isn't quite perfect. It's, it's not a Super Meat Boy, Super Mario... Uh, you know, style of jump. Uh, it, it's it's a little, it's good, but it's a, it's a little muddy. But uh, but yeah, you know, jump is a very important thing. So in a platformer, I'm almost always going to take some time to try to talk about the jump, uh, especially if it if it allows you to really uh, 
really make the difference in the game. You know, sometimes a good jump is the difference between a good game and a bad game. And if it's a, especially a precision platformer, you got to have an excellent jump. And uh, this just jumps pretty good. I do notice when you jump in place, you seem to jump higher than when you do the flippy jump. Okay. So, yeah, there's some nuance to this game. I mean, I, I like it so far. I mean, it's working out uh, quite well. Right, elevators. Okay. Okay, so there's something. Is that a one-up, I'm guessing? I don't know. All right, we got spikes down there. And it did suggest that I try to stop time, so let's stop time. Oh, there we go. Well, that made things slightly easier, I guess. Oh, man. A Faust Samurai. Oh, now we're in business. Check out that crap. That is awesome. Oh, another message here. Uh, hold down attack to use my weapon in rapid fire mode. Okay. Up, up, up. Up we go. Enemies up here. Nice. Okay, so those little triangles, I'm, I guess it looks like they refill my time bar I jump all dash into perform dash I don't think I can dash what do you mean dash they just mean run I can't make that jump huh okay I wonder what's in that torch over there See how it's set off by itself off to the side? Makes me feel like there might be something worth getting over there. Let's see. Oh, it is. Spike Hammer. A murderous ball of destruction boasting incredibly high attack power. Uh, yeah, I'd say that was time well spent. Oh my goodness. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. I, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Okay, here we go. So we've reached the absolute top. As you saw up there, there was a gap that I couldn't jump over. I'm going to assume that at some point I will get that dash that the sign was referring to or a double jump or something that's going to allow me to uh, actually get through there. So uh, again, Metroidvania. So anytime you re reach something that you cannot uh, actually traverse, you're always just going to assume that uh, you're going to be given a means to do that in the uh, not too distant future. Ow. Okay, I don't know what that is, but I don't want to get it. Because I like this thing. Of course, it could be an even better weapon, but... I'm just going to assume that it isn't. Ah! Die, pumpkin head. There we go. Alright, moving on, moving on. Okay, I, this is the second door like this that I've seen. I don't seem to have any way to get through them. Yeah. Nothing to do with my time ability, so... Yeah, let's keep going. Hmm. Your sins have been engraved into the monument. That's kind of weird sounding. It's a weird way to put it. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, let's go through this ominous blue pathway. Oh, goodness, an anime lady. Okay, she's the first devil. Oh, I I can't. I'm just through. I'm going through it. No, I can't. I can't. My anime quotient has been reached. Oh, Lord. You need to die. You need to die right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take it. Take my giant ball. Oh, come on. I don't want to die here. Oh, oh, damn. Okay, well, that worked out. Victory! I have defeated the green anime lady. Um, so I guess she was one of the seven titular devils. So, wonderful. Let's keep moving. Okay, something here. Running sandals, now we can dash. There you go. Metroidvania, folks. Metroidvania, this is how it works. They're always going to be doling out those upgrades to you. And always giving you things... Oh, no. Okay. I just jittery there. Use my time stop just to be safe. 
Okay, I, I like this ball, but it's really hard to control. So yeah, let's go ahead and save there. I'm not really going to talk to you guys about this game for much longer. I mean, you can see what this game is. If you're interested at all in this game, you know by now. If you like weird anime stuff or Metroidvania style games, I mean, this game is pretty freaking solid. Uh, so I'm going to head back up towards the top if I can stop getting hit by every single thing in the world. There we go. Up. Attacking upward. Okay, I think I really do need to get a better weapon right now. I'm sure that in the skilled hands, this is probably the best weapon in the game. But look whose hands it's actually in. All right, let's get this. Okay, now we got Boomerang. All right, all right, Boomerang. I can, I can live with a Boomerang. So now we're heading back up to the top where we can use the dash that we just earned. And we're going to see where we kind of head from there. Oh, crap. All right, there we go. Up, up, up. So I have to say, overall, this game is pretty darn good. I like the controls. Uh, they do work out nicely. Wow, mega boomerang throw. Uh, the music is, you know, fun, if not a little bit repetitive. Uh, it is anime, so if you like that, you're going to like the aesthetic. Uh, the art overall is great, uh, tight, you know, really well done anime art style. Uh, you know, I, I like it. I mean, it's pixel art uh, done well. And that's something that is really uh, nice to see. You know, the game is from 2006. The graphics have been slightly remastered. Uh, from what I'm given to understand, uh, don't really have a good basis for comparison there on on exactly what was changed, but uh, all in all, the game looks really good. Controls are nice, tight, gamepad supported by default. Oh, gamepad is supported by default, which is really, really great. And uh, yeah, plays tight, feels good. Everything is, uh, yeah, thumbs up across the board, I think, really. I mean, I cannot, uh, come on, dash, damn you. Oh. All right, I'm having a little trouble dashing with the analog stick, so let me move over to the D-pad here. Try to complete this jump, and then we will end things. There we go. All right, we have made it to another area. Whoops, accidental time stop. Die, fire. Or pumpkin. Come on. There we go. All right, what's this? Certain traps are affected by different circumstances, uh, such as time stop. Okay. Experimentation. All right. Whoa. Okay, so if I turn off time, it'll turn off those for a moment. Okay, cool. Die, pumpkin. Yes. And continuing on. All right, well, uh, yeah, I think we've pretty much seen everything we need to see from Bunny Must Die. Uh, it is available as part of the current Indie Royale. I have really enjoyed this game uh, so far in playing, and I think I'm going to play it for a little while longer, see how it goes, see how it uh, evolves, and uh, hopefully things will continue along the same path. Definitely a great uh, a great game to have in your selection. Check it out on Steam Greenlight. Of course, as I said, it is part of the current Indie Royale. Uh, you've got until approximately the 22nd to pick that up, and I cannot make that jump to save my life. There we go. Ah. Uh, all right, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.